another Shark Tank special. The Shark Tank. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. And today we got my, my co-host. Or I'm going to be honest, man. I'm going to just let her go ahead and, you know, just put put her big girl panties on today and host today, man. <laughs> She's the host of <laughs> the, the Shark do? Tank, man. We got Gina Views in the building today. And we have the lovely Blue Face Barbie. Barbie. Oh, Welcome. I got you. Trust Thank me. You. Thank you Miss, for coming. Miss, I don't get my money off the ground. I get it off the dresser. Period. <laughs> but I'm trying to get this contract money now. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> What's that been like for you? Um, It's been a breath of fresh air. I've been in the yeah. game for a minute. And, you know, I respect the game. And yeah. I'm just trying to do bigger things for myself, for my children. And, you know, get corporate. How many kids you got? I have three. Three. Okay. I have three kids. What you got, boys, girls? Two girls, one boy. Oh, Ten, six, and seven. Oh yeah. So yeah, so they're a little bit. A they're a little, yeah. But I do it for my kids. I do it for my kids. Yeah. I love my kids to death, and my yeah. daughter's getting older, so I'm like, it's time to get this corporate money. You yeah. know, use this platform I have and build myself up. What What corporate is it for your new TV show? My new TV show. Um, prior TV shows that I've done. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just really trying to get out the game. I'll never disrespect where I came from. You know, the yeah. game got me to where I'm at. It there got me are. respected. It got Talk me noticed. Shit. And, you know, now I'm just trying to do other things with yeah. that platform that I got. Well, let's talk about that. Let's go to the beginning. Let's How go. did you get in the game? Wow. Okay. I was going to ask that, but there you go. <laughs> Here we go. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> All right. So um, I started out, like, working at a strip club when I was 16 years old. Damn. They knew I was underage. They didn't give a fuck. Where was this at? In Kentucky. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. Talk that shit. Yeah, Shout from the Louisville. South. Shout, Shout out, out to Louisville, 502. Man. You know, Shout we got a lot of stars from Louisville, ESTG. Yeah. The list goes on and on. But, um, yeah, it started out with the strip club, and then um, I had a baby when I was in high school, and me and my baby daddy always did all types of freak shit. And um, we was actually having a threesome, right? And we moved the threesome from the hotel room to the hallway. We, we fucking in the hallway. So a pimp walked by, and he come back later and knock on the door. He's like, man, that bitch you got right there, like, that's a million-dollar bitch. Like, you know, tell my baby daddy that. And my baby daddy's like, nah, my bitch not doing none of that. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious. In my head, I'm like, I like money. Like, what is he talking about? So we ended up giving him him and his bitch a ride to an out call, and that's when it kind of started. And um, he was just telling me, like, you know, you can make so much money. I'm 17 at the time, like, don't know nothing about the game. He's like, you know, you can make so much money, da da da. But at the same time, I'm with my baby daddy, and he's not mm -hmm. with none of that. So I just started lying to my baby dad. I'm like, I'm going to the nail salon. I'll go to Walgreens, buy some press on nails, act like I'm at the salon all day. I'm like, yeah, I was at the salon all day. But it started out with, you know, that guy that I met in the hallway, and it was like back page days, and he kind of mm -hmm. just, you know, taught me taught me enough to make some money, and from there, you know. My game just got better and better and better. Who taught you? Oh, boy, did the, the dude that came in? The little the bit of game. You know, the beginning. But the real game came later. But that was the introduction. Like, Would you call it? Was he your turn out, folks? No. No, not at all. I was just giving him, like, a little hundred here, a little 200 oh, well, here. Candy yeah, money. Candy yeah, money. yeah. He, it was just a little, little, little bit of here and there. But I didn't get turned out until later. Until how, later. How long before your baby daddy found out? Mm. Mm. I don't really know. It was it was some like that. it was some months down the line because he would start to go on my purse and be like, "How you get this money?" Because you know I'm in high school. He's like, "What the fuck? How you got a thousand dollars? Like, where where did this come from?" So you know, it it came out eventually, and I just started doing my thing. At this point, who's caring for your kids? Um, it was just one at the time. It was my one. I had my senior year of high school. My mother, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. mother, yeah. Very so supportive. me and my mom, me and my mom. She's real supportive. Was she supportive in what you did? I mean, she know what you did, right? My mom was an escort, and she kind of is the one who told me, like, you need to go to the Bunny Ranch. You need to take it elsewhere. Like, you're doing this little shit. Like, you could mm -hmm. be doing up here. So Sent your ass to Pahrump. Yeah, my mom, my mom supported me. She definitely did, and she knew what I was doing. But she wanted me to do it on a bigger scale than, mm -hmm. than what I was doing at the time. Yeah. Prior to you being, uh, um, you dancing and your mom telling you what she think you should do and you guys meeting this man in the hallway, mm -hmm. what did you want to grow up to be? 
Mm, that's a good question. Um, I really wanted to work with like teen girls. Um, I actually graduated with a criminal justice degree. Congratulations. And I wanted to work with like teen girls because I came up in foster care and I felt like it was always like these square ass ladies telling me how to live my life and how I need to be. And I'm like, bitch, you've mm -hmm. never been through what I've been through. Like you can't tell me how to live my life and how to get my money and you've never been in my shoes. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to work with teen girls and tell them like, hey, you know, like, this is the route you should go or let mm -hmm. me help you because I feel like they would listen to me because I'm somebody who's been in those shoes. Were so. you still in the game while you were doing this? Yeah, I was. Going to college, going to college by day, doing the other shit at night. How'd that, how'd that work out for you? How was it juggling that? It was hard, you know, having my daughter um, being 17, 18 years old, but you know, I've always been a hustler, so I, mm -hmm. I always wanted more. Even if I was in the game, I wanted more game. If I was doing this, I wanted better. So I always just wanted a better life because I went through a lot as a teenager, and I was like, you know what? I don't want my daughter to ever have to go through what I went through. So if it meant selling pussy, selling plasma, selling hair, I don't care what it was. I was willing to do what it takes to make sure my daughter had a better life. Mm -hmm. And then when did you get on TV? Okay, so I started my first TV show with Jocelyn about two years ago. I did Jocelyn Cabaret Season 2, mm -hmm. um, Atlanta. And then I just did my own show, Barbie Wants Both, with Now That's TV. Shout out to Now That's TV. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Show dropping real soon. Yeah, I was I was yeah. all down the app looking for the yeah. episodes. I'm like, it's where the show coming. We just wrapped filming like mid-October, so it hasn't came out yet. But um, I did a poly love show. Look, It was guys mm -hmm. and girls looking for the perfect poly relationship. So, yeah. How was that? It was a roller coaster ride. I have one of my cast members here, Toxic. Shout out to Toxic in the building. Hey, Toxic. Yeah, Toxic, toxic got her name for a reason. She real, real, real Toxic. Is this who you picked? You got to stay tuned. Oh. We, 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 can't get, we can't give all the tea, but, um, you know, it was a roller coaster ride, you know, and it taught me a lot about myself, you know, that mm -hmm. maybe I need to work on some things about myself and maybe I might not be ready for love, so... Yeah, it taught me a lot, but I love my whole cast. Like, they all fuck with me, and it was an experience. I love it. Shout out to think, Now That's TV. Do you think being in the game is a big factor of why you don't want love and you don't... Like, you know, just looking for that that squares love. You know, just coming home to your man, you cook a, or he comes home to you, you cook a meal for him. He gets in the, he gets in the shower, he comes, he lays down with you. Y'all watch a movie, y'all fall asleep, you get up, you do the same thing all over again the next day. Do you mm -hmm. feel like that was something you weren't ready for? I mean, I'm ready for that? it because even in the game, when I've had like real folks, like I still had that. You know, we're cooking, we're cleaning, we're laying of up. Of course. You know, I still had that. Of course. So it wasn't necessarily about that, but I think that maybe like um, I'm damaged from a lot of the things like trauma and like game things and everything that maybe I'm not really quite ready to be in like a relationship outside of the game and then another problem that I have is because I'm in the game a lot of people that aren't in the game don't respect that you know they don't understand that I have to go get my money or whatever so yeah yeah it's hard. So I've, I've talked about that before like right? mm -hmm. so you know um you know a chick wants a relationship you know because I think any, any woman is a woman and this is just even proved to you Gina like you know her being a lady of the night or doing mm -hmm. something to that sense she still wants to feel some type of love she wants to feel that warmth mm -hmm. that shelter from a man of course you know? but when you try to do it with and I'm not even knocking squares man I, I ain't nothing but love to them or square men mm -hmm. nothing but love to them man like you hey man use the man's man it's all good but I know the average square strongest man's mind Mind cannot take or endure you know him coming home and you know he wants to lay down but you're just getting up and getting ready to put yourself together and get ready to get out that dose step right mm -hmm. you know and if he does how long does that actually last right exactly you know and that's and that's been hard um but it is what it is like yeah you feel like you found troubles in L troubles in paradise because of that you know being a woman that's still in the game but still trying to search for some love exactly but that different but type also of love. Not like love from the game but you get what i'm but saying even, like that stuck to you but love. even with like um guys that i've dealt with in the game like real folks real real pimping real hoeing like i feel like that so many people talk down on pimps that like love their hoes. And I feel like that's totally normal. I feel like you're supposed to be square for the person that's getting down for you every night or taking chances for you every single night. So I feel like 
a lot of people don't understand that part of the game when a when a pimp really loves his hoe too. Yeah. You it's know? okay. It's it, listen. It's okay to love, and I get that part. Mm -hmm. I get that aspect. I understand that. I get where you're going with that. But then I start to look at it like that shit turns toxic if you really look at it because now all the goals and the agendas that we once set forth are now starting to be muddied down and get watered down by your emotions. Right. Now all that shit goes out the window. We're not even remembering why we even got together. Right. And you know, I just think that's very, like, I, I just think that's, right. that fucks things up You're a right. little bit. Right. You get where I'm going but with that. But it's just so hard because fem females choose with their emotions. So at the end of the day, if a, if a female isn't feeling you in love with you, you're not going to get that hundred percent from her. Mm -hmm. True. So it's all about how the guy handles it and puts those emotions in check and say, Hey, you know what? I know you're in love with me and I might love you too, but we're focused on this goal right here. And when we exit, the game or our goal plan, that's when no, we can hey, focus on ain't no this settling, and that. Ain't no settling ties to a woman's emotions. Once y'all start feeling, there's things that you may say to me, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just say, for instance, you may tell me that you will never call the police on me, right? Mm -hmm. Just use that for, like, I'd never call the police on you. You could have seen another bitch call the police on me and be like, man, I'd never do that shit to you. That's a faggot-ass bitch. And then four years down the line, have your reasons of feeling like you want to call the police. Yeah, I've seen it all before. You're you know right. what I'm saying? I've seen it all. I've seen emotions, it all. emotions grow. That's all I'm saying. The motherfucker might say they'll never mm -hmm. do something to you, and I'll use that in a general aspect. Yeah. People will say they'll never do nothing to and you. And do it. And then, man, I'm talking, and it might not be the, today. And even with it guys. It might not be tomorrow. Even with guys, they'll say, I would never leave you Very broke. True. I would never leave you down bad. I would never fuck that, you off. You know what? I'll tell and you they this. Do. And, and I get where you're going with that one. But I'll tell you this. That shit just comes from experience. Mm -hmm. I never knew why, you know, chicks that were, you know, 23, 24, 25 chose 40-year-old niggas. Mm -hmm. It's because they already was seasoned. They already had. They, that chick always felt, like, okay, he already done did all of his plan. He done went through all of his trials and tribulations. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I never understood. I said, man, why is this chick choosing this old ass nigga? But it's because he had the game. He had his game figured out. Right. <clears throat> he knew what he already did. A chick already felt like he already done went through all the wishy-washy of fucking up, you know, uh, you know, doing whatever he was doing, you know, just, just, just misguiding himself. We'll right. say in better sense and better terms, you know, mm -hmm. just misguiding himself. She feels like he's already done went through all them levels of failure. Right. Now when she gets with him, it should be all smooth sailing. And I always felt like nine times out of 10, it is. Mm -hmm. I yeah. had to learn that. I never, I never knew until I got a little older, mm -hmm. you know, who is, uh, or what does your ideal spouse look like outside of the people you pick for casting? That's a, or that's if, a, if it's a particular person out here, um, maybe a celebrity or something. No, no, no. I'm bisexual. I'm very single right now. Um, I'm bisexual, so I like men and women. And um, the perfect partner to me just looks like somebody who can support what I have going on. Mm -hmm. Um, make me want more. You know, like even outside of the game, if 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 it was a complete square that is not involved with the game, make me want more for myself. You mm -hmm. know, um, make me feel super more secure and. Help me build to what I already have going Looking, on. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not gonna say you wrong for what you're saying, mm -hmm. but I really be. This is I really feel this way. See, this is a conversation that needed to happen. I feel like y'all look for too much reinsurance in, at all the wrong times. In what way? You know what I'm saying? Like just that reinsurance. Like just say, for instance, you're with somebody, right? And you see them, they might. And this is your man. Mm -hmm. And you see him growing and glowing and doing things you turn to a sense of hate of that because you feel like oh well, he might be leaving me behind now you're starting to have all these weird ass thoughts like oh well give me my reinsurance let me know every day as you're growing i'm growing <laughs> and sometimes a motherfucker don't always have the if i have the time to take out to tell you that instead of just showing you, then I'm not really doing shit. Right. There's nothing that I could be doing that even matters. And I could sit here and reinsure your ass all motherfucking day long. We're going to be broke as shit. But if you want me to sit back and reinsure you, I have no problems with that. Like, it, it, it shouldn't have to work like that. You're, there's going to be, you're going to miss something. But gotta, I feel like when you're showing somebody, you don't have to tell them. Actions speak louder than words. And a lot of dudes, they talk today. that shit, but they don't back it up. People rather have words, but I, okay, well, I'm a firm believer in it. I show. I'm a shower. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've just noticed a lot of people today, they do want the words, even if they're not true, especially for a woman. They'd be like, yeah, lie to me. <laughs> Tell me you in like, love but, with me and there's or, nobody but else. <laughs> but chicks will sit there and scream and say that they want the truth. And once they get the truth, they can't fucking handle it. 
That's very true. I mean, I could I could speak for that for myself. Right? Like I I can relate to that. You know what I'm You're saying? You're right. You're right. You say You're you right. want the truth, but motherfucker give you the truth, you can't handle it. I'm sure it's just like you trying to have a genuine relationship, right? Mm -hmm. You saying you came from the game and being a hoe, having a genuine relationship with somebody. They they it's a different feel, man. It's just they still it's you, you want to be treated equal right but right. there's always that thought in the back of their mind that they know that what you're doing right they feel like you can't turn a hoe into a housewife or whatever the fuck but it's like you know it is what it is like accept me as i am and a lot of people can't handle the lifestyle yeah. that i live or they they just feel like you know i'm not equal for respect for this square over here this fucking 20 guys for free you know they feel like she's better than Somebody like me who like getting that. my money off the dresser. I hate that, boy. Yeah, I hate it too I hate because that. I feel like that's the worst. Like, I'll, I would rather be a bitch to get paid. You take your kids to school in the morning just to say. Yeah, I do. Drop them off, make sure they got some breakfast. I don't give a fuck what you was doing the night before. Yeah, I handle my business. I handle my business. And, you know, I'm a woman at the end of the day, just like anybody else. So I feel like I'm deserving of equal respect. But once a dude finds out that you're in the game, it's over. Like, so I lie. I'm like, no, I'm just, I just do TV, da 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 da. But yeah. Being that you are looking or you you date both genders, would mm -hmm. you date a guy who date, dates guys? No, no. absolutely not. No. <laughs> absolutely not. Cause now I gotta worry about you cheating on me with dudes and bitches. Like that's a little bit too much, but. I mean, me and my sexuality, I just feel like it's cool for a bitch to say, you know, my girl got a girlfriend. But it ain't cool to say my dude got a dude. Like, what the fuck? No, that's crazy. Yeah, hey, like. I'm say this. Look, and I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it shouldn't have to be cool on either end. That's mm. just my... You feel like, like it, it should be it equal. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. what happened to equality fucking here? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Straight up. Like, if I'm, fucking with a, if I'm fucking with a woman, use better term, you know, I'm trying to better podcasting. If I, was fucking, if I was fucking with you a You've been woman, in anger management. I have, man. It's, I've, been trying to, I've been working on myself. So I love that I, for I, you. I'm looking, you know, if, if you know, you, you with another woman, if my woman got another woman, I'm like, damn, like, okay, cool. You wouldn't accept me fucking with a man. I wouldn't either. Right. So why would I accept you wanting to fuck with another Because we're going to bring that other girl to the bedroom with us. Like, she's going to be oh, helping can, out with cleaning, we cooking. Can yeah, like, if I had a girlfriend and I had a... Like, so I really I do want a house, poly relationship. So if I came in the house and I was nailing her to the wall and in a way that might have your oh. emotions on the wall, you said, I, you fuck me like that. I'm going to be like, I you going to wait till I got one. off work? What I the fuck? I, was, I thought I was the only one that you fucked like that, you know? I mean, just but, wait until I get home. What if it couldn't wait? I'm going to be a little mad. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be a little mad. If you're going to look. My I know. I'm is, fucked up in the head. Not even. My <laughs> point to that was if you're going to, and I'm sure you can agree, if you're going to accept it, accept it all the way. You're right. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But you're me personally. Accept, it, accept that shit all the way. If you're dealing with a woman and you say, yeah, it's cool to sound, and my girl got a girlfriend, and yeah, it do sound cool. But my, And it does a man with a man? No, it doesn't. But if you found that out, could you honestly be no mad. i couldn't because the type you know, of woman i am i'm a very mm -hmm. alpha female like i like a very alpha male that's like i just can't see my man sucking no dick i can't see my right. man getting pinned down by some dick like i what if he can't see you in his mind and this is an alpha i mean man that's that fine i'm willing i'm willing some pussy. i'm willing to fuck with just one guy but any guy i've ever fucked with is like yeah I, I like that shit i like that threesome shit i want my girl to have a girl but i could be with just one person whether it was a guy or a girl but I just couldn't see my man getting digged down like I fuck that. With, like, I fuck with toxic, but you look like a nigga, church. Ugh. I fuck with you. That's a woman, <laughs> right? And I'm just I saying, a like, whole that's a, different so breed. You, you got to think, but you got to think about the different dynamic mm -hmm. of what it is today. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This isn't too. You can't always say, "Oh, it's two fire fly ass girls licking some pussy," and you join. That ain't right. never. That's that. It might be a pair of panties and two pair of boxers on the floor <laughs> at that point. That's Period. all I'm saying. It, the, the, the dynamics don't change. What if your nigga ain't really with that? He don't want an extra pair of... Well, then it's going to be me and Toxic in this bitch. Like, period. He don't, want, he don't want an extra set of boxers on the floor. Yeah. I'm well, just trying to roll with you on this. I mean, one. that's all. I'm I mean, every relationship, every relationship <laughs> like, is different. If if I was with a guy and he wasn't with the shit and, and we were in love, you know, I would say fuck that. But there you go. 
Honestly, I I, I'm very submissive and whatever my man wants or whatever my partner wants, I'm pretty much with mm -hmm. it. So like it's that. like, yeah. It seems like I've been on a roll. Maybe I'm breaking through because I feel like I've been on a roll with chicks actually coming in and saying, because I just had one that just left, man. Shout out to uh, Carmen Karma. She had just slipped oh, through. Okay, mm -hmm. And she was, yeah, and she was just talking about it. She was like, man, sharp. And she was talking about some unforgettable shit. <laughs> yeah. Unforsakeable shit and very honest. Mm -hmm. But in the end of it all, she told me, she was like, I just, she was like, sharp, if there was somebody like to just like showed me like, hey, don't do this. She's like, I ain't never got nobody to tell yeah. me nothing. She's like, mm -hmm. so I'm always just doing what I want to do. She's mm -hmm. like, I'm looking for that alpha. I'm looking for that man that can tame me and put me in my place. She's like, I just haven't genuinely found it. And this girl is married. Been yeah, she's married. married. I was gonna years. say that. Isn't she married? She's been married for eight years. And yeah. Saying she said, and in, 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 in so many words, she mm -hmm. was like, I haven't even, I haven't found that. Mm hmm. Nobody to set me. Or well, maybe my she place. was the wrong one. She need to come get with Barbie. Period. Ooh, we gonna see. we gonna turn it up a little bit. We can do whatever you <laughs> like, baby. Shout out to Carmen Karma. Like you be Let's... in my DMs, I be in yours. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, all of that. <laughs> Dude, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all of that. Hey. I wanna uh, I wanna dive back into Jocelyn's Cabernet. Okay, let's do it. Let's do that. Yeah, I'm a Zeus fan. You said Cabernet. What is it? Cabaret. Cabaret. <laughs> my bad. She said choreography. <laughs> choreography <laughs> choreography yeah you're right you're I, right she fucked me up i still don't know how to say it right um but it you know your time on on the show was mm -hmm. short-lived i think you right. did about four maybe three episodes in the you're reunion right. mm -hmm. um and your beef or your issue why you ended up leaving it essentially was about you supposedly being jocelyn's bottom bitch and right. she ended up giving that title to someone else Correct. Can you talk about that a little bit? What was going on prior to you entering the house to where in your mind when I get in that house, I'm the, you know, I'm the bottom bitch. So me and Jocelyn were friends before the show and um like even outside of Jocelyn, I've always been top bitch. Like top dog, I'm an alpha female bottom bitch. You like, that bitch? Yeah, I'm that bitch. You I sure bring you in that, that big bitch? bag. I'm I'm positive. You sure? I'm I'm, I'm very... gonna pull your resume did, did, after this. Pull my resume. Do your, your research. Cause I'm, I'm big Barbie. Your whole, like I'm gonna go pull your whole yeah, facts. Yeah, check the whole facts. I'm gonna go check like, your whole facts. Can none of these bitches out trap me? <laughs> she said the first dude said that's a million dollar right there. Yeah, you know, you already know what's up. But yeah, these bitches can't out trap me. But that's besides the point. So, yeah, um, on Jocelyn's show, we were friends before the show, and, um, you know, we were real close. And when we got on the show, she basically told me, like, yo, I want you to beef with Lucky, the, the girl that I fought on the show. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you know, I don't like her. I'm not feeling her energy. So so I did exactly that. I called her out for her shit. And um, basically after I did that and got in the fight she made lucky the bottom bitch and i just wasn't feeling that because you're not bottom bitch material like mm -hmm. you're you're just not it you're you're not you're not a bottom bitch like i've been a bottom bitch i know what a bottom bitch is supposed to do by a real and, pimp though and, yeah not by, by a woman i've i've been not I've, by been, a woman. I've been with some real pimping like okay so we, so if you have you and me both know that that's not by that's not no realness that's just right no that's some tv her, shit but i don't yeah. like how they try to take the terminology and try to say it's bottom Bitch. Well, it was basically oh, like the top bitch of the show, all right, essentially. I'm say, say top bitch, yeah. like the team captain. Okay, say right. Team but captain. Jocelyn thinks she's a pimp, say team so captain. don't yeah. say say top bitch. Well, well, say well. The bitch. girl switched it to that after me, and she's like, "I'm the cabaret captain." But Jocelyn has also said that she thinks she's a pimp. So, and you know what, Jocelyn, nothing but love for you, baby. But you know better. It's just because she was around a nigga. She done, uh, chicks pick up game from men. Mm -hmm. The game that they go and they move around to anybody else, they pick it up from men, people who they've been with. So these are things that she's experienced. Mm -hmm. She ain't just picked that shit up by herself. Of course. And I think me, I also put that terminology into the show because I was so down for Jocelyn and being a chick from the game and coming into the show and just being so down for her. I'm like, look, even if it isn't a bottom bitch because you're not a pimp, I'm your bottom bitch of this fucking show. I get it. And, I, and I'm going to do exactly I just that. I hated the terminology. Too. Yeah, because it, it, it don't make am sense. Yeah, it don't make sense. Am I tripping or am I No, you're the right. Truth? You're you're 100% right. But it was just some TV shit. And I just felt like I was the bottom bitch of that shit. Even if it wasn't a pimp involved or none of that, I'm still the bottom bitch, period. It ain't even about no pimping and hoeing. It's just talking about just the game in general and where I feel like that slang terminology came from. That's why mm -hmm. I was like, Jocelyn knows what's up. 
you even knew what's yeah. up. That's why you we even knew told better. Me. We all knew better. Yeah, we like, all that's knew better. not it. Top bitch, that's cool. Top cabaret ca- candidate, whatever the fuck you want to use. But that terminology <laughs> feel like it's just being misused. That, that it was. was being misused. It definitely was. It definitely was. But I'm still bottom bitch, period. It seemed like you were really hurt by um, how she treated you. She threw your things down the, um, the stairs, down to the front. Mm-hmm. Um, what was going on? with Whoa. behind the scenes like um when you so end up leaving. actually when the things were being thrown down the steps i wasn't right there they had recorded that scene before i had even pulled up to get my stuff but you know how editing works because right. i wouldn't stand for nobody throwing my louis luggage down down the fucking steps i got hella expensive shit but yeah i was extremely hurt because i was really down for jocelyn like i said and when she had made that girl the bottom bitch after i had just started all this beef it's like bitch mm-hmm. come on now are we not on the same team here you know it's like Damn, I, I was really hurt because I, I have a big heart. And, you know, when I fuck with you, I fuck with you very, very hard. And it's nothing I wouldn't do for you. And that's how I felt about Jocelyn. And she mm-hmm. just had me simply fucked up. Mm. So it, the loyalty just wasn't both sides. You know, I was down for her, but she wasn't down for me. So the cameras came on and she just switched. You know, I was her friend mm. before all this shit. And the fucking cocaine and the fucking cameras got to her fucking head. And... That so was that. how much of it was real as far as the beef between you and Lucky? Because you guys said that real. you had a situation where she was wanted to work for you and your boyfriend. And she did. And she did. It was very serious. Um, it was very real. But it was probably something that I wouldn't have brought up if it wasn't for Jocelyn asking me to. Mm. So it really our beef wasn't really that serious. You know, you you had paid the person I was dealing with and. You know, we was both on the same team and it didn't work out. And that was that. That happens with a lot of bitches. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I wouldn't have brought up. But it was the fact that Jocelyn had asked me to. So I was like, you know what? Okay, we can take it there. Fuck Mm -hmm. this bitch. You asked me, you you said fucker, so I'm saying fucker. We're going to put it all out there. Mm -hmm. Because she had had a boyfriend at the same time she was paying the guy that I was the bottom bitch for, that I was dealing with. So... Mm. I had brought it up like, you know, you had a boyfriend, bitch. You're you're not a bottom bitch. You're you're you got a boyfriend, you're paying him, you're doing this, you're doing that, but it really wasn't that serious. Mm-hmm. I had just brought it up cuz she had asked me to. In that moment, um you were surrounded by all black girls. Right. And when you and Lucky was about to fight the first time, you said nigga. Yeah, I did. Did you feel uncomfortable saying it or what made you even feel comfortable using the term? Cuz then I mad. saw You better tell something. I, I saw a live a couple of uh like that came out afterwards and you were reading a message from Jocelyn and you didn't say nigga, you said n word. Mm-hmm. So it seemed good. like Somewhere along the lines, you stop, you remove the word from your vocabulary. Right. I definitely removed the word from my vocabulary, and I really didn't realize that it was offensive to anybody because I have been surrounded by black people my whole life. I was in foster care by a black woman, which doesn't make it okay, but this is a word that I have been saying in songs and vocabulary, and nobody had ever been like, yo, don't say that. And once I got on TV and had said it and got all the backlash, like, yo, that's fucked up. That's when I realized, you know, this is very offensive to people, which I didn't know before. It's just, and I, I get where you coming from. Like, I get where you trying to say from your background, because I, I get that shit. Mm-hmm. Just from where you came from and just being around certain people. But you have to understand, once you get on them cameras and you get in front of, like, the things that you may have been comfortable with saying before might not be so cool now, right. you know? So I think that was something to have to, you you had to use your second thought on that one. Which so. I didn't know at the time that it was offensive because I thought it was only offensive if you're saying it like the E-R at the end. You know what I'm saying? I like I have I have three black children, three black mixed children. And, you know, I've, I've always been with black people mostly. So I'm not, I'm far from a racist. It's not going to give you the, but, and I get And it's not okay. It's, it's not, not okay. Right. To say right. And I'm, I'm not saying that it is. But once I got on TV and I got all the backlash, that's when I realized, you know, people are really offended by this. This isn't okay to say. So I have removed it from my vocabulary. And I do want to apologize to anybody that was offended by that because I'm far from a racist. I don't want to offend the culture, you know, and it was just a, simply a mistake. This was two years ago, but yeah, I, I do apologize and I don't want to offend anybody, you know, but um, no, nope, I just nobody. wasn't aware, you know, like I wasn't aware that it was a racist or offensive thing. And once people told you, me, I'm like, OK, I'm sorry. Know. Nobody no, I in really the house, didn't. Nobody in the house checked you? No, nobody. Even in that moment, you know, nobody was like, what the fuck are you saying? You know, we fought because I had put her on blast for paying my right. man because her man didn't know. But, um, you know, I'm singing songs, you know, with, with that word in it. I'm, you know, using it loosely. And nobody is saying, like, don't say that. Don't say that. And my whole life. It's been like that my whole life. Yeah. And nobody has said, you know, you're a white bitch. Don't fucking say that. And it's real interesting because in season three, that was an issue. Right. On exactly. On season three. Right. 
So I, I thought that somebody might have checked you behind the scenes or because mm -hmm. I, I want to say in that scene, that was the only time you said it. It was more so the fans that had checked me. And, mm -hmm. and when it went on the blogs that they were checking me and tagging mm -hmm. me and saying, you know, why the fuck is this white girl saying this? Yeah. And that's when I realized, you oh, know. I said the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to offend anybody. Oh, and yeah, it wasn't, sure saying the same thing. <laughs> well, it wasn't meant to offend anybody. So if anybody was offended, good, I bro. do apologize because I'm far from a racist. Like, I love the culture. No, you know, not like, I'm that. not. Here to offend anybody, but I, I, don't think I just didn't that. know. I don't think it's that. I think it's motherfuckers trying to figure out what made you so comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is more in it. Not saying that you're racist. I don't think you're racist. Like mm -hmm. you said, you got three beautiful babies that are black, you know, mm -hmm. and you've been around black folk all your, enti your entire life. So I just think motherfuckers just try to figure out like what made you feel so comfortable. It, just, it came out so like, like. I think what made me fluidly. so comfortable is that I've just been saying it my whole life and nobody has been like, yo, don't say that. Or even on the show, yo, don't say that. That's not mm -hmm. okay. So it's just always was okay for me up until that moment. And then when the show came out and I seen that people were actually offended, I'm like, okay, you know, that's fucked up. I don't want to make anybody feel like I'm that type of girl or mm -hmm. I'm disrespecting anything. So I just cut it out and said my apology and said my piece. But it's definitely something I don't say anymore. And Good. I just, you know, I, I came up in Louisville, Kentucky. I came up with a all black family foster care and and I've always said it. Nobody nobody told that me. That had been a mm -hmm. small area. Yeah, fucking yeah. right. Especially being raised in Kentucky. Bible Bell. I came through that yeah. motherfucking Hopkinsville. Five oh two. I came through Hopkinsville one time, man, on a motherfucking <laughs> bus getting extradited to Tennessee. Oh, Trust well, I don't me. like that for the you. The black the hey the the hey man, black folk the, the community is small. It definitely is. It's very small. It's very so small. I, somebody had to pre warn you. No, nobody never Something. told me. No nobody ever Kentucky, told me. Hopkinsville is a lot is a lot smaller Kentucky. than Louisville. Louisville is very like a true. is like Atlanta. But we're talking about Kentucky. At I this promise point. you, no, through if, college, through the strip club, nothing, through never, no working, no dudes. nobody. You know, I've dealt with black men and said it in front of them, or even on the show, nobody checked me. Okay, well, hey, nothing. Sharp tank, sharp, no jumper, <laughs> Gina Fuse. Hey, don't say that shit no more. I got you. That's over. With. It's out of it's my vocabulary, cool. and I do apologize. I'm not. Cool. I'm not here to. No, offend you're anybody. fine. I'm yeah. just saying, if nobody's ever said anything, we're gonna say it right now. No. It's a hard no. Not okay. I got it. Hell hard no, no, not hard. Hey, 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 fuck. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got it. I'm sorry, y'all. Like, that was two years ago, and I've learned since you're then. Good. Good. And I haven't used that word since then. You're on a greater path. Yeah, I'm on a greater path. <laughs> yeah. I'm on to better things. And you, and like I said, I do apologize. Like, to both of you guys or to any yes. black people in the room, like, anything, I'm not that girl. Like, I don't want to offend anybody. I'm very non-confrontational. I stay in my lane. I get my money, and that's it. Non-confrontational is a reach. <laughs> I'm not confrontational. We don't get there. We we, we uh, get there. We you get were there. supposed to go on the pole and show your skills. Yeah. And you removed your shoes and walked over to Lucky. I did and did. What was you thinking in that moment? Why did um, you decide then to do that? Well, our very first fight, like I was sitting on the couch and she had just when I had exposed her for paying my dude at the time. She had just started swinging on me and I was sitting down. So I felt like she had snuck me. So it was just up from every point from there. It was like, whenever I see you, I feel like you snuck me. It's every time. And I was so hurt by Jocelyn making her the bottom bitch. So I was like, nah, mm -hmm. from every time I see you, it's up. What's your relationship now? Who? Lucky. Lucky was just on my show, Barbie Wants Both. Um, it's, it's okay. I feel like we'll always have that tension because it's like, if we beef once, we're going to beef forever type mm -hmm. of thing. But, um, you know, it's no animosity. I appreciate her for coming on my show. Um, it's just not, we're not close, mm -hmm. but we don't have beef. What about Jocelyn? What's your relationship with Jocelyn? My relationship with Jocelyn is fucked out. Like, whoa. I'm sorry. I'm I thought that respectful. was your, no, you're good. No, At the end of the day, no Jocelyn, you. I will always, I will always appreciate Jocelyn and respect Jocelyn for giving me that platform and putting me on the cabaret. But it's just certain things I don't stand for, and I feel like she's a fake-ass bitch. And when those cameras come on, she turns into a different person. And I feel like the drugs got her on a whole different level. Were you um, dating Stevie J no. at any point? I was not dating Stevie J. We was fucking. He was yeah. giving me a bag. Um, he got some weird fetishes. <laughs> but I'm not here to put anybody on blast, you know, like, that's not what I'm about. Um, I respect anybody who's ever given me some money. So it is what it is. Just because that was her baby daddy, I'm not going to turn away the bag. Period. How did you guys meet? We met through Jocelyn. Oh, okay. We so also, it's not a secret. 
it's not a secret. She told me, she was like, he's a trick. Uh, get your money, sis. Like, he's about that bag. You know, she's moved on with her her new person that she's with. And she basically told me she had me meet up with him for something. And when when he, when he I met up with him for the favor, um, he had tried to get at me. And I told her, of course, my loyalty was, was, was with Jocelyn at the time. And I'm like, you know, your baby daddy tried to get at me. She's like, bitch, get it. He, he going to spend. Get that money. So, yeah. It's crazy when... The bitch say, yeah, my husband ain't my man. My baby daddy, he's a trick, bitch. Break him. I broke him. Damn. <laughs> Stevie J, church, if you ever need to come sit down with me, Jack, just to figure this one out, man. Let's get it figured out, man. Stevie J, one of my favorite t- TV personalities you ever. ever. <laughs> Cause sure, church, she just threw you under the bus. And then I didn't mean up to. And then tried to run you over again, Jack. I didn't Did the mean back to, stop? but honestly, I feel like um, Stevie J wasn't about his word because he was like, I want to manage you. I'm going to spend a bag on you. I'm going to manage you. And then he kind of just like didn't do what he said. So it's like, you know, fuck it. I'll say my truth. But as far as anybody else who spends the bag, you know, your secret is safe with me. Like, Was he supposed to, like, sign you as an artist? He was supposed to sign me as, like, under his management and help me get on Love and Hip Hop, get on certain deals. And you know how that goes, how mm-hmm. these guys are. They promise you the world, star, moon, sun, and it, and it just didn't go <laughs> like that. It didn't go like that. That's so that's why I get my money up front. That's just a hole in the game. Like, man, you know, they're going to promise you everything. <laughs> But yeah, but that's why I get my money up front. Shit. You got to get your money up front. But a lot these of these dudes. bitches that, that come, listen, and, and I'm sure you can agree with me. Like, mm-hmm. there's some people that I'm sure that you've seen on, you know, podcasts and things like that that are just literally doing it for nothing. You oh, know? yeah. I've seen a lot I of interviews. I've like that not one time. No, I, I've, I've done my research. When I did an interview with you, I was like, damn, I'm nervous as shit. Yeah. And I watch a few of these girls, and I see a lot of the girls <laughs> that you interview. You are you know, they're like big OnlyFans girls, but they're basically cool with just getting slid out. And I do OnlyFans, too. Shout out to my OnlyFans. Make sure you follow and subscribe. But um, I'm not about just that, you know? Like, I'm not just going to be out here fucking just to be fucking. Like, if you're, it's 2022. If you're not doing something for me... You know, it's just not gonna work out. Whether we're on camera, on OnlyFans, whatever, you you gotta you gotta give me something, you know, because it's just like I could I could do me. Like I don't I don't need you. You gotta do something for me that I'm not doing for myself. So it's just like these other girls I see you interview. I see them doing their thing. You know, I see millionaires girls that are, that are on OnlyFans that you interview with. But you know, it's it's gotta make sense. You gotta be doing something for me. If you think you're gonna fuck me, you gotta do something for me. From the major. That's how I feel. I know that's right. <laughs> it's 2022. <laughs> hey, like, yeah. my pussy don't get wet for somebody who's not doing shit for me. Yeah. And that goes for everybody. I don't give a fuck if you're a rapper, NFL player, NBA player. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. What are you going to do for me? You got this bag, but what are you going to do for me? When did you find out that you felt like Jocelyn was fueled by cocaine? What do you... Repeat it. When did you feel like Jocelyn was fueled by cocaine? When them cameras like started start rolling. On, she started changing on you. When them cameras started rolling. I've always known that Jocelyn has had a cocaine habit. That's not a secret. You know, it's not a big deal. A lot of people do cocaine. I'll never speak down on her. Like I said, I respect her. But it's really taken a toll on her. It's, it's done a turn for the worse. And when we did our reunion and we couldn't get through the reunion and we couldn't get no questions asked because she was just feeling like Incredible Hulk. I was like, wow, she's she's really far gone. She's really far gone. But she completely switched up on me once the camera started rolling. We both live in Miami. We would hang out every day, be together every day. And, you know, that was my, I was her bottom bitch. You know, even if it wasn't the right term, bottom bitch, I was her top bitch. I was her right-hand man. You know, I was willing to do whatever for her. Like, before we started filming, she would call me, like, I need you to make this scene a movie. Like, pop your shit. So I was there for her, but... I just seen her switch up, and I think the drugs has something to do with it. And I pray she gets the help that she needs. You know, it's it's serious. Like, addiction is a serious thing, and I feel like she's far gone. I do, I really do. Damn. So I really do. What came into play when you made the decision to go from Zeus to now that's TV? Yeah. Um, it seemed like a couple, a handful of the Zeus girls are going over to Now That's TV. Yeah, a lot of people are going to Now That's TV. Shout out to Now That's TV, my new show. Um, I feel like Zeus kind of blackballed me when me and Jocelyn fell out. And mm. I don't blame them because it's like, that's their bread and butter. Like, I'm just a cast member. So 
who are they to keep working with me and giving me an opportunity because she's the type of bitch that if they would have given me another show or put me on another show like baddies or anything that you she would fit over there perfect yeah and i, I auditioned for it ain't got something i talked yet. to natalie natalie wanted to put me on but she said it was up to the network ultimately and at the end of the day uh, natalie <clears throat> i love you to death baby <laughs> but you came up here not too long ago and said yeah pretty much <laughs> You are the network, <laughs> you know, so I mean, damn. And that's, that's how Jocelyn was, because, you know, Jocelyn and Natalie are their big breadwinners. I love, I love Natalie. Natalie, Nat, shout out to Natalie Nunn, man. She definitely came in. I think I did it with me and Gina. Gina invited me on it. We sat down. It was definitely cool. Yeah, so shout out to Natalie. I appreciate yeah. her. Like, she's the type of bitch that's giving bitches platforms. Mm -hmm. You know, she's helping yeah, she these is. girls who are smaller, you know, let me put you on. And, yeah, I, and I love me, a bitch like that. When she told me what she was giving a bitch, she said just in a couple of weeks and just coming and hanging out with me, I said, yeah, that's a cool little bag. I couldn't yeah. even argue with the girl. I said, oh, okay then, you know. <laughs> she's, she's definitely... I mean, I don't know if that's her big true. I, don't, yeah. I, I saw the interview and I seen what she said they were giving them. And I don't know if that's true or not. But on Jocelyn's show, they was giving us a thousand a week. And wow, what a thousand she a week. Said was oh, that's busting y'all little. Bumper. That's I, I commented on the post and I'm like, that's I'm big cast. Like, but maybe with her show, they were doing more. But I know for Jocelyn's show, all of the cast members they were giving us a thousand a week. I'm telling for you, how many weeks? How many for weeks? three weeks? For three hey, weeks. Listen. What? 3000 for three weeks. You remember when that So that's why I left. Bonus? I'm like, bitch, I make this in a day. Like, what the fuck? Maybe, well, y'all's was two years ago. Right, exactly. They've, so they've, maybe, you know, they, they've the bag might shit. be different. Uh, man, because Natalie was talking about... <clears throat> 50k. I, mean, two, I heard her. Weeks, she yeah, said 50k. Like, yeah, I ain't wanted, but she's talking about 50k for two. Well, three shout weeks. out to that paycheck. I'm trying to be on baddies. I don't care if it's west, south, north, <laughs> east. I don't give a fuck. I'm that bitch for it. But um, <laughs> I don't. I don't work over there or nothing. But it looked like the the but one more chance girls was. It looked like they was making getting the bag too. I could. They was I don't looking know if my a little eyes hungry. But um. Yeah, I fuck with Natalie. Shout out to yeah. Natalie. She she was talking about having me on baddies. It didn't work out. And I feel like it was because I was pretty much blackballed, you know, for speaking out on Jocelyn. And they probably felt like if they gave me another show or another opportunity, that Jocelyn would be pissed. You know, that's what type of bitch that she is. She don't want to see nobody doing better than her. Yeah. And that's the vibes that I got from her. Um, I felt like with her... You know, you came from being a stripper, you came from being a hoe, but you talk so down on strippers and hoes, and that's just not me. If I if I was to make it to a billionaire tomorrow, I would never talk down on where I came from or what right. I did to get here or talk down on these girls that's trying to make their way out. And I feel like that's what type of bitch that she is, that she just, not to talk bad about her, but- Jocelyn Hernandez. Yes, not to talk bad about her, Jocelyn, but I'm not feeling that. I feel like- any girls in the industry, the strippers and hoes, you talk to them crazy. You're a $2 bitch. You're a $2 hoe, this, that, and the third. Like, bitch, you came from the strip she club and hoe and two. Listen, no offense to her. Shout out to Jocelyn, but she talked like that's where she came from. That's what I she thought. She talked like that's where she like, came I, from, but right. she don't respect it. She don't respect it. She get don't that. respect it. Like, the way you know, I'm saying, like, I haven't watched her lately, mm -hmm. but from when I first watched Jocelyn Hernandez hit the scene, like, that's what, made me, that's what made me respect her. Like, oh, okay. It used to make me laugh when I walked by the TV and I watched somebody watching this shit and just whatever. I'd be like, <laughs> I was like, man, they let somebody through the door. Right. No so way. to hear her say, like, it's. it's some bullshit. I'm like, you know, she since changed. she started her cabaret, she talks down on the ladies. Like, y'all ain't shit. Y'all some dusty ass bitches. Y'all some dick sucking ass hoes. And it's just like, bitch, you came from the same life as me. I'm trying to get to where I thought that she was gonna be more of a mentor. Like, you know what? I I did what you did, and let me help you make it out of the gutter or where mm -hmm. where you're coming from. But instead, it was just like low blows after low blows after low blows. And I and me personally. If I was to make it tomorrow, I would never talk down on a bitch that came from where I came from. That's just me. I'm not uh, saying it's right or anything, but what I interpreted it as, she was talking to you guys the way that she was talked to. Mm -hmm. So that's all she knows. That's, that was my interpretation of it. I'm not saying it's right. I'm but... not going to lie, man. I'm, I'm here like mediating that, and I would tell you if you was wrong, but truth need no support on that one. That's the truth. It is true. I see. The, I, we all seen Stevie. Mm -hmm. We all seen Stevie dog her and you know put her second and this that and the third. Sometimes you don't know better. But not even that. I ain't even talking about man. It, it, it's not about Stevie. This shit is way before. Yeah, way, it was way, way before Stevie. Before. It was way see, before I don't. Stevie. I'm not that far back, but I'm not that far. Well, back, we only know from know, Stevie. From what I know from experience, 
that shit falls from back. Do yeah. we know what may have stemmed that? No, we don't. But I know the motherfucking ballpark that shit falls. But we in. all know. For sure. We've it's, all probably been treated unfairly in life. We've yeah. all probably been talked down on. You know, I, I had a real Memphis pimp that was real gorilla pimping that talked to me like a fucking dog. Like, bitch, I don't give a fuck if you're sick. You're going to go out here and get this money. And I know how that made me feel. Mm -hmm. I know how sad and upset that made me feel. And I would never make another woman try to feel that way. Well, that comes with self-awareness. Why are you going to say that, though? Huh? Here, why are you going to say that? What do you mean? Because that's true. That. No, like, you just found somebody that was just dogging you. Don't but say you, that. But you said, you said that Jocelyn probably acts the way that she acts because of how she was treated. And yeah, I know that whoever I was, she may have been dealing with, don't put labels. Similar to like this, like you know, but I've been labels, treated like that too. Because you ran, but you but look at the label that you ran to. I didn't like that. That's that's you get what but I'm saying. True. It was like, well, I fucked with a real stuff, and, and just even you putting real in this, I fucked with a real stomp down that treated me <sighs> like shit and just ran me down in the mud. No, that was just from your choices and who you chose and whatever the fuck your soul may have gravitated gravitated towards at the time. But that doesn't give a Don't, right to treat somebody else not saying unfairly. It is. No, it's not right. I'm not saying right. that it is, but let's not put labels on right. who that may come from because that can come from your next door neighbor. That can come from your best friend. Your whoever, best friend. Right. That can come from your You're sister, right. your cousin. Right. So I just didn't like that there was a label I well I came from mm -hmm. a real stomp down gorilla pimp and you know who treated me like dog shit. No. Mm -hmm. You just chose what you chose, and you had to live with that, baby. Mm -hmm. If you piss in the bed, lay in it. Right. It'll dry up a little bit. Just try to, I don't know, go grab a towel or something and throw two towels over top of it. It might go soak through, <laughs> but go get you two more. Right, get a right. Taken. And, I, and I wasn't saying it like that, but I was saying it more so as in no matter whoever it is and treats you bad, whether it be a mom, a pimp, a best friend, a neighbor, um, that doesn't give you a right to treat I, I anybody got else a lot fucked of love up. for you. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. You sitting there saying it in a pimp, like, man, leave that out of the category. I'd rather us pinpoint other shit like this. or other people mm -hmm. than just like pinpointing that. I get where you come from. Yeah, you might have had a bad run. That's cool. That's all right. I've had many, but when I was in the game, I've had many, since we want to talk about it, mm -hmm. I've had many bad runs with many sorry ass, miserable bitches. It happens. And it don't just be where a bitch is getting beat. Because bitches do stupid shit to try to get their ass slapped and a nigga try to curve them. Now you over here cutting up and doing this and calling this bitch and calling that bitch Absolutely. trying to slander her name. Then when the nigga comes slap you about it, you play victim. Don't do that. I don't do that. And I have to know. That's why you I looked up at the sky because you did it before. No, I haven't did that before. You've never done that not one time. I've never did that you, not one time. Anytime man. I anytime I got in trouble, I deserved it. You? Absolutely. I'm 28 years old. 28 years old? I'm very you, seasoned. Wait till you hit your 30s. That's when you're going to get dirty. Watch. You ain't got there I'm yet. not ready. You ain't got there to where you've said you've actually hit the cases of fuck it. I think it's, it's kind of like. Trust me. It comes, homie. It comes. It sounds good now. Let me mm -hmm. get this one. I got this one. Go ahead. It might sound good now, but when you hit them dirty 30s, I mean, you might hit that bad case of fuck it. You don't know what you're going to do. Like we was talking about earlier. Yeah, you might be with a chick or you might be with somebody. It doesn't matter who you're with, right? Let's. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And you're with them and they fuck around. They say they'll never call the police on you. They'll never do nothing like that to you, right? And then four years later, they do it to you. Absolutely. Come on. Where does that come from? We don't know. I don't know. I'm not that type of bitch, so I can't answer where does it come from. You just from. haven't, no. I, you know what I think it is? You just may have not touched those positions just yet. I gonna, would never call the come. police on anybody. They're going like, to they, they come in everybody's life. There's always a time in your life. There's always a bitter you moment. Have a, you have a choice and a bitter ass moment. Bitter yeah, as a motherfucker. There's always a bitter moment, but I would never take it bitter as to far as I'm about to call the feds on you. I'll take it bitter and say, I'm about to smash your windows. I'm about to call your other bitch, do some sh Instagram shit. That's but whack too, though. It's definitely whack. That's like me calling your mama and telling your mama what you do. Man, I don't have somebody send pornos Come on, that's to my like mama. Me. It's just as good, though. I don't do shit like that. Yeah. But I've watched a lot of people want to reach people who don't have that problem like or like you know you're not engaging mm -hmm. but then once you engage you're the worst in the world i know I but just when it comes to police i, know I feel this like is probably going crazy for, just let us rock homie me and her we're playing verbal judo right but now. when it comes to police <laughs> um that's just a line i don't cross you could fucking stab me with a whole knife probably shoot me 
the police shit is right. just once you once yeah. you do some police shit, you People can't come nice. back from that. So nice. that's just some <laughs> shit. I don't feel like I could ever do. <laughs> Got something to do. Go be nice. <laughs> Knife out the pantry. Well, we Let's see knife. if she call the cops. <laughs> Let's just, see what she do. No, I'm not a cop caller, and I feel like somebody could do a lot of fucked up shit to me, but the cops is just a line that once you cross that line, it's no coming back from it. And, I, and, I, and I'm really a product of the game, so that's just a line mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, real bitches don't cross. You know, you could fuck my fucking best friend in front. You could fuck my mama in front of my face. That's just some shit that we're not doing. You know, the police, I, I might get your ass beat. I might get you robbed or some shit. But the, but the police, we, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Are you going to get them robbed? I mean, I'm just That's saying how alternatives. I'm just saying let alternatives. Let That's a, a, a sick war, alternative. If there's a wars, <laughs> I can get the wars. I'm with that. Like, yeah, if, if, if war, we gonna go there, problem, yeah, I'm with that. But you saying that you are gonna rob me? That's just because you don't want you want to see me down. You don't want to see me with it. That's hate. You're you're right. That, that hate, can be a hate. Now I don't shit. give a fuck if you got a problem with me as a person. That's straight. Bring your motherfucking <laughs> ass. But if you gonna tell me like that, you want to rob me? It's because I, now I'm gonna start looking at you like you weak and you needed this. Have you been in a situation that like this. set somebody up before? No, I've never set anybody up, but I'm just saying if it you came ever down set to somebody some... up, tell me that. No, you I've never set any eyes. I've never set anybody up, sharp. But I'm saying you as are. an alternative to the police, <laughs> if it came down to us being that deep in beef, instead of me calling the police, I would be like, you know what? We we about to teach his ass a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying that I have, but if if it ever got to that high of a beef to where a female felt like, okay, I need to call the police on him. There's other alternatives. You could fuck his life up in more than one way than the police. But you bitches be trying to die doing that type of shit. Not you bitches. Not me. Not you? Not me. I don't be trying to die. I'm just speaking on it like, man, bitches be, okay, not you. But mm-hmm. bitches be really trying to die because they be doing some real dumb yeah, shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't and know like, the and like, Or just getting beat up like past its means. They Do you see what she said she's willing to do when she gets upset? Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of certain situations, not saying you've put people in it, but just mm-hmm. the thought process. That's why a lot of fucked up shit happens and there's a lot of domestic violences that don't even really need to be had at. But mm-hmm. you speaking it, from how the female's doing it, what about what the guy did to make the female get to this point? Maybe he done took all her money, done took all her shit, done did this, that, and the third. Last time I checked, me and you both know. Mm-hmm. And I hope you stand with me on this one because this one going to make or break you. Wasn't it all by choice and not by force? It is all by choice it and not by force. It was all by choice. <laughs> but so but when a female... Everything that you did was all by choice. It was never because he tricked me. No, it wasn't. Tri- no, it's but no when I tell you tricks. I want to leave your ass, that don't mean you take all my bags and all my money and all my shit. Like no. who does that? I had it. No. So if you want to rob me for my shit, both can play that fucking game. I don't no, never start never, the problem, hey, but I'm a finish. I it. ain't never believed. Listen, and I feel that I ain't never believed in robbing anybody. I don't think that's cool. I don't give a fuck what the situation may be. I'm not robbing nothing. Yeah, I don't believe in that either. But if you start the shit, if you want to take my shit and my money or my bags or whatever the fuck it might be, jewelry, whatever the fuck, what if you feel I'm like going to finish that shit. What if you feel like he took your heart? He can have that shit. He took your soul. He can have that shit. We going to make a new soul and new heart. Like That shit can be replaced. But but no, if baby. you if you take something no, from me baby. first, I'm going to finish that shit. Period. All we can do is heal it. Yeah, we're going to heal it, a new point, one. At that point, it's only tainted. We only get one of one. So at that point, it's going to be tainted. And it's going to be healed. And we can heal that. But just to get a new one, that ain't something we can buy, baby. I, I get where you at with that one. Like, you're just trying to time. stand up. She's just trying to stand up, Gina, <laughs> and be like, hey, you know, I'll, shit, I'll buy a new one. I guess that ain't something I need to be worried about right now. Sharp now, is it? It's not something that you can buy. Love don't pay the bills, baby. It don't. But you know what? But your soul and your heart ain't something that you can buy over again. Right. Unless you need a fucking heart transplant. I mean, I've been different. I've been heartbroken a lot of times. I've I've had a lot of people that I cared about deeply do some fucked up shit to me, and it's a lesson learned. You know, you live and you learn. But as far as when it comes to fucked up, fucked up shit, you know, you gotta get your lid back. Period. But I'm not never the one to do some fucked up shit first. I'm not never the one to do nothing fucked up first. What's um what's the nastiest fan request you fulfilled? To shit on him. Oh. Mm. To shit on him. Mm. And I ended. Feces. 
and did. <laughs> it was so gross, though, because when I did it, you can, know. Can you walk us through it? Yeah, I'm going to walk you through it. So, you know, I, I went to his house. You know, I'm, I'm thinking it's just some regular, regular shit. I'm like, oh, I got to use the bathroom real quick. He's like, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Wait to use the bathroom. I'm like, what you mean? Wait to use the bathroom. I'm like, I got to go pee now. He's like, just wait, just wait. So, anyways, he ended up telling me what he's into. Shit. No, I had to pee. But he, he like both. He's with all the shits at this point. All so, the shits is wild. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> he's like, you know, this is what I like. This is what I'm into. So I'm like, you know, you know, I'm going to need a big bag for that one. And, um, you know, he, he paid how he weighed. And, and I'm not going to lie. I did it. And I never did no shit like that. And when I did, you know, it made me sick. Like I'm did throwing it, up. <clears throat> did it stink? Hell yeah, it stink. Like it didn't smell good. I'm like, how did he like? Were you guys on the floor? How did he, he lay down? Y'all in the bed? He, he was on the floor. He had like multiple different ways he went. I'm like, oh, look, I can't stunk. shit this many times in one day now. So he just laying on the floor, and um, you know, it made me throw up. And he's like, throw up on me, throw up on me. I'm like, you're mm. sick as fuck. Is he on his back or his stomach? His back. He's okay. eating it in his mouth. What in his mouth. I have a video on my phone. What it, smell, what it smell like? Like shit. It <laughs> fucking smell like shit. The fuck? That you, shit stank. He, you, he, I ate a good burger that day. His like, mouth that was open. Yeah, shit. his mouth was open. He swallowed it. I'm like, he probably going to die. The fuck? Like, Church, let me stop. I'm going to throw up. Bro. <laughs> Then I he threw cried. up, and he asked me to throw up on him and eat it. I'm like, if this is what you like, baby, I love it. Like, okay. Are these turds? No, it was more Ugh. so a little runny that day. <laughs> it smelled like Jersey Mike's and some cheese Doritos. It was a little runny that day. <laughs> it was a runny day, but um, he loved it. You know, he really that loved shit it. That smell like some come? IHOP, six in the morning. No, he didn't come. That shit, the man that did last I chef. saved his name under shit trick. Ugh, how much and, I, I gotta ask. And did y'all wait? Did they did y'all have sex after that? Hell no, nah. hell no. Nah. He wasn't into that. His shit was just shit fetish. He didn't want no pussy. Oh, he just wanted man. to get shit on. Literally, he wanted, he wanted him a choco taco. That's what he wanted, and he was yeah. showing me videos. <laughs> he was showing me videos of other girls doing it, and I'm like, damn, this is a whole fetish. Like this is yeah. a whole thing. I never heard of this before, but it's called scat fetish, and I'm like, yeah, no. you got scat, scat? Yeah, scat fetish. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was yeah. called, and that's what he liked. Oh, he was scat, smoking scat, crack. Scat. He was smoking crack. He was rich as fuck smoking crack. And I was just like, blow that shit that way. The fuck? Don't blow that shit this way. And I'm just like, if you like it, I love it, baby. Like, I'm, mm. I'm here to fulfill your desires. That shit smell like some canes. That shit smell in. like some fucking shit. The fuck? Oh, I threw the, up. What was the bag? It had corn in what it, What was huh? the bag? He it gave had, me 10K. It had corn in it, huh? No, it didn't have no corn. <laughs> corn don't digest. It would have been little corn pieces. I might upload this video on my OnlyFans after this, but hey, I didn't think people were really in into that. I'm like, what the fuck? That shit had corn in it. Ugh. Jenna, you got anything? No, we got to wrap this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> it's stinking here. No, hey, it man. don't stink. I smell good. I smell real hey. good. No, you don't stink, but like You're my mind fucked it. up. He asked. I didn't mean to fuck y'all's whole mind frame up, but I'm just saying it's that something the, for everybody. Everybody got thing. a different face. ain't the worst thing I've ever heard. Nah. She all right. Hey, like I said, baby, I understand this shit happens. And you know, for that Literally. shit. Literally. <laughs> for that shit, you know, it brought you 10K. Barbara, Period. we appreciate you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you for pulling up on us. And yes. you know, and if you have Anytime. any other detours and may later on in the future and you ever want to come back and stop by, man, we would be more than happy to have you Period. here, man. Just don't go, hey, 10K, no, raise the bar. Oh, yeah, that, that was no a couple more. years ago. The price definitely went up. So anybody who's watching I ain't mad, this, but you know what? You know, I ain't the mad price at you went up. Bitch, I'm not even mad at you because you at least you would put yours up into some thousands and you wasn't talking about 300. A sharp tank, <laughs> sharp gumble special. <laughs> The sharp tank. No jumper. These bitches better up the score, period. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. Period. And I just hit the motherfucking buzzer beater. Hey, Riley, shoot us out the gym. Thank you.